Good morning. It is Tuesday, and uh, I've not done, you know, these, this kind of live stream, uh, just kind of impromptu like this. But I just <clears throat> uh, really felt impressed um, today. Uh, instead of doing just a, a written or emailed um, devotion, I just want to talk about deception. Okay. Um, so let's let's pray really quick. Okay. Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now that you give to us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. We pray that the eyes of our understanding are enlightened, and we know the hope of your calling and the glorious inheritance that you have for us, your saints, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, I want to start here in 1 Timothy 4.1. Uh, it says, now the spirit expressly says, so expressly, that's a, explicitly, it, I mean just emphatically is saying <clears throat> that in the latter times, which we're living in now, many or some, so it's, just, it's, a, it's a, some is, 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 is it's a notable amount, okay? So a notable amount, some, uh, will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of, uh, of demons speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, to abstain from foods which God created to be received. Um, but here, you know, Paul, Paul deals here with the thing, uh, with, with deception. And Jesus talks about it. It's recorded in both uh, Matthew 24 and Luke 21. He talks about deception. And when he's Jesus is asked, you know, what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age and his, by his disciples? And so he tells his disciples, he says, the first thing he says, be careful that you're not deceived. Okay. It is possible to be deceived. Even if you're a believer, uh, there, there, I, I can't remember. It just pops into my head right now. The scripture that says, um, that Satan will deceive even the very elect. Okay, that he will deceive even the very elect. Okay, so if you're a believer, if you, that means that you're a covenant person with God, you're walking in a covenant relationship with him, that means you can be deceived if you're not careful. Okay, so um, to be deceived and depart from the faith isn't a just, you just jump, you know, you just abandon ship. Okay, just all of a sudden one morning you woke up, you said, I'm not gonna be a Christian anymore. I'm not going to follow God anymore, okay? Um, that's our neighbor with a motorcycle driving by. Um, so it's, it's a deception that comes and that causes you to depart from, to walk away from the good faith, okay? Not that you walk away from believing things by faith. You know, I believe by faith I'm healed. I believe by faith I'm, you know, whatever, okay? It's the faith. Okay, what is the faith? The faith is what Christians believe. It is, we believe that Jesus is not just fire insurance, but Jesus is our Lord. And we are committed to him as our Lord to do what he says. Okay, and some people will say, well, Jesus is grace. No, it doesn't say Jesus, no word. Jesus has grace, okay? But Jesus is not grace. Jesus is love. But God is love and God disciplines, okay? So it's important, you know, we need to, hey, sweetheart, Faith just came out and sat here to join me. Um, so let's look, I want to look at, first, let's look at um, Matthew 24, okay? Matthew 24, um, Jesus is talking to his disciples and he tells them, um, well, they're, they're asking about the, the temple and everything there, and he says, not one stone will be standing upon another stone, okay? You know, I was, I was talking to uh, a, fr a friend the other day and talking about these kinds of things, you know, because this is in around 30 AD, and the, the temple is destroyed in 70 AD. We know that because it's a historical fact, okay? It's a historical fact that Israel is the Jewish nation and homeland, okay? It's not, it's not the Palestinians, it, okay? We're going to clarify that, okay? It's not Palestine. It is it's not just the Holy Land because it's holy to, you know, many religions. It is the home of, is, of the Jewish people, okay? Um, 
Jesus says in verse 4 of chapter 24, he says, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Now, when, when he says here, he says, he says, many will come in my name. You know, I, I'm one of those. I thought, well, who's going to believe, you know, a bunch of, you know, these false messiahs popping up all over the world and claiming to be the messiah? But it's, it's not what it says. It says, many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ or I am the anointed by Christ. Okay? And will deceive many. Why? Because they're going to come and they're going to claim that they have a special anointing, a special gift from God. They are, they are a special, they're, they're special. They've got a new revelation. We just need to have grace for everybody. We just need, no. Jesus didn't have grace for everybody. Okay? Jesus didn't come saying, I'm grace, I'm grace, I'm grace. He came saying, I, I, I came to bring division. My gospel brings division. Okay? It divides. The, the word of God divides out light and dark. Okay? It removes, it, it puts a separation. He said, he, literally, he says at the end of the age, he's going to separate the wheat from the tares and the goat from the sheep. Well, this, I don't know about you, but that kind of terrifies me a little bit. He's going to terrify that he's going to he's going to divide the wheat from the from the tares, right? And, and he's going to divide sheep from goats. Well, he's he's also dividing light and dark. He said, "My message will bring a division between um, a husband and a wife, and a and a and a father and children, and parents and children." And that that message is di is divisive, but it's not divisive in a good way because the purpose of that division is to reveal the light, so that you know that you can walk in the light. And so that you can see the darkness and avoid walking in darkness. Okay? So Jesus, his biggest warning is to avoid deception. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived by those who come saying, you know, God just, God just loves you and he accepts you for who you are. Yes, he does. When you get saved, he loves you no matter what condition you're in. But he wants you to submit to the word of God and to change. Okay, he wants us to change. He doesn't want us to. We, we came to him filthy and dirty and 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 covered in sin, and and living sinful lives. He doesn't want us to continue that way. Okay, he wants us to walk worthy of the calling to which we're called to. We can't just live any way we want, and say, well, you know, grace, grace, God's grace, grace is the strength and the ability that comes from God to help you to change, to help you to... Paul, Paul, Paul when, when he was talking about all the things that he was suffering, because there was a messenger of Satan sent to buffet him. And Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for you, for when you are weak, then I am strong. The, the implication and the connotation there is that when we're weak, he helps us to be strong, to withstand temptation. Okay, deception can come in and say, you know, that there are entire uh, church organizations now that have taken on the, the theology that what God has said in the Bible is wrong and is a sin is now okay, and it's not. God, God didn't change his mind. Salvation can take a person from where they're at and change them to who he wants them to be. Okay? This is deception that comes in. And listen, we, I talk a lot about the, the, the parable of the ten, the ten virgins. That here they, here they are. They've all gone in to the tent and they're waiting for the bridegroom. This is the bride gone in and she falls asleep. And at the end of the age, they hear a sound. The bridegroom is coming. And so they all wake up but they're not all ready. And Jesus will say to some, depart from me, I never knew you. How is it that he can say he never knew you? Because you never drew close to him. Because you never drew close to him, we, we have to draw close to him through his word. 
Okay, we have to we have to bring ourselves into the lordship of Jesus Christ, where His Word is Lord in our life. If He says this something is a sin, it's a sin. Don't do it. Okay. If He says it's wrong, don't do it. Okay. Well, let's look. I, I want to shift gears just a little bit, um, but staying in the same the same sphere here. Um, in Luke 21, this is a similar conversation that Jesus is having, and this is Luke's account, okay? In verse 8, it says, Take heed that you not be deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has drawn near. Therefore, do not go after them. Don't go after people who water down the, the gospel. Don't go after those, right, who claim to have a relationship with God and claim to be walking in the Word and, and having a... Uh, a revelation of God. You know, it's like um, that one organization out there that does, um, uh, instead of tarot cards, they do blessing cards. So they've taken, they've taken, they've taken tarot cards, right? And they're using them and calling them good and breeding out blessed futures. That's witchcraft. That's rebellion. Okay? All right, don't be deceived. But when you hear, verse 9, but when you hear of wars and commotions, do not be terrified. This is what I really wanted to hit on. Commotions. I love this because commotions means riots. And it causes terror. And, and here in the next verse he says, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. The word nation there is ethnos. So that's ethnicity. Ethnicity will rise against ethnicity, okay? Kingdom, that means somebody having authority. So elected officials, um, specifically, this means concerning the kingdom of God. So kingdoms are rising up against the kingdom of God. They are, so I love, I love our president. He said, he said that we are one nation under God. He says that God, government is not greater than God. He walked over to St. John's Church yesterday carrying a Bible to pay honor to that church yesterday that was burned by people who were rising up because of ethnic issues. They're rising up, ethnos against ethnos, right? They're ethnos against ethnos. They're rising up. This kingdom of darkness is rising up and it's trying to take a stronghold in our country and they're trying to tell us that if we believe the Bible, we're a basket of deplorables and that we need to let our faith evolve. No, that's deception. When they tell you let your faith evolve and to accept things that are unscriptural as true and that we are old fashioned and we need to let go of our religion, you steer clear from them. Don't be deceived, don't let deception take away what you, you value so, so much in, in, in your faith in Jesus, in your faith in God, in your faith in the Word. Deception is out there and it wants to take you. It wants to, it wants to remove your relationship with Jesus and replace it with something false, with a false Messiah, with a false, a false feeling of, of security because um, Don't fall for deceptions. Can I just, hi Susan, don't fall for deceptions. Ethnos rising against ethnicity. This is a sign of the times. It's, it's a sign that Jesus is returning soon. Kingdom against kingdom. Where, where, where elected officials and, and, and government officials and, and na national leaders are, are at each other's throats. And it really comes down to yeah, I like what the president says, we're fighting an invisible enemy. He knows what he means. He's not just talking about a virus. He's talking about the kingdom of Satan rising up against the kingdom of God. And you need to be careful who you side with. Amen? Amen. Don't, don't allow deception to come in and take away the word of God that's supposed to be planted in your heart and allow bitterness and hate to, to, 
to change, to change who you are, are destined to be. Amen? Well, I just, I didn't want to really do, I, I, I went much longer than I actually wanted to go on this, actually. But I just, you know, I just really felt to encourage this morning because it's just really big in my heart. And I just, you know, as a pastor, it's so important. See, I, I can't, I can't herd goats, but I can, I can shepherd sheep. And where there are sheep, I feel such, hey, Curran, I feel such a pull that people need the truth and they need to hear the word of God. And I'm gonna do that every time I have opportunity. All right, I love you, God bless you, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that we are not those who are deceived, that we are not those who walk away from the truth, but we uphold the truth and we uphold those who uphold the truth. And we will not be deceived and Father, we pray right now for peace in this nation against these ethnic risings, against ethnic ethnicities rising against ethnicities and leaders rising against leaders, all, all for the intent purpose of, of trying to destroy the kingdom of God and trying to remove God from the nations. And we thank you right now, Father, that you are working with us and helping us. You have given us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. And that we have the spirit of God, so we have the spirit of peace and love and a sound mind and not of fear. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Have a great day.